We have some irony this morning. Leslie Stahl covered the events of Watergate, the events surrounding the Watergate <laughs> Hotel a few years ago. And here we are in the Watergate Hotel with Leslie Stahl and CBS News. Now that's a good reporter, connecting up all the events. I like that. But they let us in. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, the, to, be fa to be fair, this is the hotel. And the break-in took place in the office building next door. Next door. They wouldn't let you in. They wouldn't no, let you in. So. <laughs> Which is harder, to be the interviewee or the interviewer? Oh, much harder to be the interviewee. This is a very difficult and uh, uncomfortable position for me. I'd much rather be asking you questions. But why? Isn't it easier just to relate the events of your life? That would flow so much more than having to do the homework. I'm not used to it. I'm not used to it. I'm not often interviewed. And I'm used to interviewing. I feel comfortable with it. She was in Lincoln. I didn't know she, she came to Lincoln, what, in 1968? 68. I covered the Nebraska primary when Bobby Kennedy and Gene McCarthy were running. I think Lyndon Johnson was still in the race then. Yeah. Um, my memory isn't very good. But I remember driving into Lincoln and thinking what, a, what an attractive community, and particularly liking the idea, from a reporter's standpoint, that it was a state capital, meaning good political stories. Mm, oh, yeah. Right? And mm -hmm. a college town. And uh, I thought that that would be a great place for a reporter to work. But then I went to Boston instead, which is the same uh, kind of town, yeah. a capital in a, in a college town. You know, Marlene Sanders came to London uh, not too long ago. She represented our YWCA tribute to women. And she was making some very interesting observations regarding CBS and the fact that women are not in the upper management positions. And also she said, what if I looked like Charles Corralt? What if I had great jowls and thinning hair and was fat. Do you think that I would be on the news? <laughs> is that a question? Is that a rhetorical statement? <laughs> I, I have a different outlook than Marlene does. You do? Oh, yes. I think that uh, it's very difficult to make statements that mean anything about women in television because we've been in the business for so short a time. I was hired in 72 because I was a woman. Uh, I've read pieces saying women aren't going to last. First I heard we weren't going to last past 40. Then when, it, when, when we did, then it was past 50. Then when we did, now when, uh, when aren't we going to last? Uh, there are women in television who aren't gorgeous. Yes, they wear a lot of makeup, they fluff up their hair, but men do the same thing. And you know it. And I'm not telling your audience anything they don't know. Men in television are in the men's room while we're in the ladies' room putting on makeup, blow drying, styling their hair. Lord knows what else they're doing. And uh, it's the same for both of us. It's, uh, it's sad that, uh, that for the most part, paunchy men don't make it in television. Now, Charlie's an exception. He's brilliantly talented. He's a great writer. He's a great wit. And he is certainly an exception among the men. I mean, you pick out one name. But Leslie, you're very attractive. What if in 1972 you didn't look, makeup. You didn't look makeup. the way that you look right now? Do you think you would have got the job? I didn't look the way I look. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that would be <laughs> um, They may well have been judging women then, but I think as far as lasting and surviving, women have had to just be good at what they do, and that's the same with men. And sadly, I think a lot of the men that they're hiring are also being judged on the same basis. A lot of the new men they hire are also quite attractive. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just think it's the same. I don't think it's different for men or women in our business anymore. Well, then why are there so few of us? Because they didn't begin to hire us till the 70s. I was one of the very first women at CBS, and they hired me in 72. It was a mere 10 years ago. Now we have loads of women, and I'm still around. And the other women they hired in sort of my class, most of us are still around. We're in our 40s. We're going to last. OK. Hang in there. How much do you have I'm, to travel? I'm not even being a cheerleader about it. We're just going to last. It's a, it's a fact. I don't travel too much because President Reagan is not a traveling president. I cover President Reagan usually mm -hmm. when I'm not doing Face the Nation. He doesn't travel too much. And uh, therefore, I don't I like to travel. But I have a child. And it becomes a strain. So I'm happy to all over well, the place. Well, how much does it cost? My, my brother's a police officer here in Washington, D.C., and mm -hmm. he would give me some ballpark figures that every time the president wants to go down mm -hmm. to the store for a Coca-Cola, you know, by the time you get out the secret agents and the cars and the protection and the limos and so forth, that it costs X number of thousand dollars for him to go down the street. Well, for him to take an airplane across mm -hmm. the country, Air Force One and the support people and mm -hmm. the... It's thousands. 
tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. That's not why he doesn't travel. He, uh, he's being presidential. He's sticking to the White House uh, in the campaign season. And, mm -hmm. you know, it suits his uh, campaign plans uh, to stick by the, the facade that says, I'm already president. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I understand that CBS News was a little piquet, shall we say, at uh, Walter Cronkite for saying that your CBS News has gone soft. Mm -hmm. Do you think, has there been a change? Well, they're less interested in, in taking an, what we used to call the automatic Washington story. Now uh, the White House correspondent is competing with a story from Lincoln, Nebraska, or, or Chicago, or anywhere else around the country. And of course, I, as the White House correspondent, wish they would just take my White House story as an automatic as they used to. Mm -hmm. um, mm. But yes, there's a difference. I don't know if I'd call it soft, but it's mm -hmm. definitely moving away from Washington as a major central focus. Although, if you turn on every night, you'll see that there is some Washington story in the broadcast near the top mm -hmm. of the show. Back in 1974, she covered the presidential election, and there were little labels on oh, the desk mean. that said Cronkite, Rather, Wallace, and... Female. And female. You have come a long way, haven't you? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Leslie I will Stone. tell you that you tell that story, my bosses were devastated when they found that out. They were devastated when, when we all went up there and it said female in front of my name. Why don't you take your name tag off of here and put it down there? <laughs> Let him know Leslie Stahl has arrived and oh, is staying yeah. and is going to stay. Thank Watch you. her here on 10 11 Strong Face the Nation. Of course, she's the White House correspondent. Delightful to meet you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Leslie Thank Stahl you. is her name. Stay tuned. 10 11 Morning continues.